So, let me discuss the last group of drugs which are used in the treatment of Parkinsonism. So, if you go back to the pathophysiology of the Parkinsonism. So, I have discussed that Parkinsonism is occurring mainly due to imbalance between the dopamine and as well as acetylcholine. The dopamine levels they are reduced and acetylcholine levels they are increased. So, we have seen a group of drugs which were increasing the dopamine levels. Now, let me discuss the group of drugs which will decrease that acetylcholine in patients with the Parkinsonism. So, those are the drugs which will inhibit the brain cholinergic transmission. So, cholinergic neurotransmitter is the acetylcholine. So, when you are inhibiting the brain cholinergic transmission, indirectly you are reducing the acetylcholine. So, for this we have central anticholinergic drugs. The central anticholinergic drugs like trihexyphenidyl, which is nothing but the benzoxol, and then we have procyclidin, then we have benztropin, then we have orphanidrin, and then we have biperidin. These are the drugs which are useful for drug induced Parkinsonism. Alright? So these drugs, remember, they are useful for drug induced Parkinsonism. Now, what are those drugs which will cause the drug induced Parkinsonism? Right? So, we have certain antipsychotics, right? Certain antipsychotics and as well as metaclopramide which is which is an anti-emptic drug both of these drugs what they do is they block the d2 receptors right they block the dopamine receptors so once this particular dopamine receptors are blocked even though dopamine is there the dopamine cannot act so remember in this condition of drug induced parkinsonism Increasing the dopamine levels is not effective, right? Increasing the dopamine levels is not effective because the receptors on which the dopamine has to act are already occupied by the antipsychotics or metaclopramide. So therefore, we have to use an alternative therapy that is anticholinergics are preferred, right? We have to use an alternative therapy that is anticholinergics are preferred. So, in drug induced Parkinsonism, what we give is, we give anticholinergics. Right? So, that was the examples, the biperitin, benztropin, right? And benzoxol, those are the drugs what we give in these patients with the drug induced Parkinsonism. Not only this particular anticholinergic drugs, you take the first generation antihistaminics. Remember, the first generation antihistaminics they have anti muscarinic property right they have anti muscarinic activity now what are those first generation antihistaminics like you take promethazine right you take this promethazine and the other drug that is diphenhydramine. Right, the other drug that is diphenhydramine. These can, these are having anti muscarinic activity. Even these drugs also can be used for this particular, the drug induced Parkinsonism. Now, because they are having anticholinergic effect and they are having anti muscarinic effect. So, if you take the adverse effects of these drugs, remember the adverse effects of these drugs, they include a urinary retention, right? This will cause blurring of vision, right? This will cause blurring of vision. So, remember these are all your anti muscarinic side effects and even the salivary secretion is reduced. So, they will have dry mouth. And even the GI motility is reduced, the individual will have constipation. 
right this individual will have constipation so these are the adverse effects of these drugs urinary retention blurring of vision dry mouth and as well as constipation so these are the drugs acting by inhibiting the brain cholinergic transmission so that is in case of drug induced parkinsonism we use this particular group of drugs and the drugs which will cause parkinsonism is antipsychotics and as well as metaclopramide which will block the d2 receptors and the drugs what we use is anticholinergic drugs and first generation antihistaminics which are having anti muscarinic property and the drugs are promethazine and as well as diphenhydramine because they are having the anticholinergic property or anti muscarinic property the adverse effects include the urinary retention blurred vision dry mouth and as well as constipation